huh, you love birthdays, but you also get sad on your own birthday. How does that make sense? Hmm. <laughs> well, I'll explain a little bit of that. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today is my birthday. Today is my birthday and I wanted to come on here because if you're anything like me, although you may be grateful for your birthday and love the thoughts, the idea of your birthday, something about the actual day brings about some type of sadness. Some people call it birthday sadness, birthday blues, birthday anxiety, and even mild birthday depression. And it might seem strange to some people, especially if you haven't dealt with this before, but if you have felt this, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about. I just want you to know that you are not alone. So many people feel this way. Even the happiest people can get this. I'm gonna explain to you what actually is birthday sadness. Why do we sometimes get it? And what can we do about it so we can have a better birthday? And stick around to the end because I'm actually gonna give you a revelation that I had for myself that actually changed my entire outlook for my birthday this year. And I wanna give that to you. So let's go. <laughs> okay, so if you've been around here for a while or if you know me, you know that I am a rather upbeat person. I love to laugh. I just love people. I love life. I just love all that stuff. Maybe you're also generally not a sad person, but on your birthdays, you do get sad. And it might seem strange to some people, especially if you haven't dealt with this before. But before I explain more, what is birthday sadness? So birthday sadness is generally when you're feeling sad emotions leading up to either weeks before or on your birthday. You may not have felt like this months before and you may not even feel like this days after your birthday, but on your birthday and leading up to it, you genuinely feel sad. So what are some things that can cause birthday sadness? Number one is expectations. Either expectations from society, expectations from your family and friends, or expectations that you've put on yourself. Maybe you thought that by this age, you would have reached a certain level in your career, or you would have started your own business or gotten farther in your business. Maybe you thought that you would be married or have kids by now. Maybe you really wanted to buy a house and you knew by this age, you would have absolutely scored that and bought a house by now but none of that has happened. Number two is it reminds us that time is passing. That time will continue to pass and that we just really just don't control it. And that maybe we can't do the same things that we used to do when we were maybe five or 10 years younger, but we just keep getting older and there's no reversing time. Now those two reasons used to be why I used to feel the sadness on my birthday, but not so much this year. This year, for the most part, I felt at peace. Like weeks leading up to this, I was like, yeah, it's my birthday, I'm about to, yeah, I felt good. But then my trigger happened and I can literally paint the picture for you. I mean, it's not a, a huge picture, but I was in ShopRite, I was buying groceries and one of my best friends, he texted me and he was like, oh, you know, your birthday's coming up. You know, like, yeah, your birthday's coming up. And I was like, oh, I felt so good. I was like, yeah, like my birthday, yeah, exactly. And I felt like super excited. But then the question came, an innocent question, innocent, but he said, so what are you doing for your birthday? Do you have any plans for your birthday? Then I said, I don't really. He said, wow, I'm so surprised you don't have plans. And like all of that, so innocent, but I went from extremely happy to completely deflated. And literally, without me even realizing why or understanding what I was actually feeling, I was in my car for about an hour in tears. That might sound weird, <laughs> and, I, and I don't blame you if it does. But after reflecting on it, I can explain it now. And the third reason could be because the thought of your birthday and possibly not having any real plans or anything planned for you or just really, just anything really in mind to do could hit a trigger in you that says, maybe you are not worth anyone planning for you. Maybe you're not mm, really that fun to be around or maybe simply that you are not enough, not enough. Now, I am very, very, very familiar with that lie. That is something that we're, we're, we're here. Like I know that lie so well. It tries to come into my head all the time that I'm not enough, that I have to keep proving myself. So when something happens that it could be small, but it triggers it, I'm not surprised when that feeling rises back up. 
maybe you're someone that loves to plan for other people's birthday, but when it's yours, it triggers you when maybe you don't see someone planning the same way or in good intentions and you just don't know what might be happening, but it's just not what your expectations are for the day. I wanna give you some tips. While I can't control what the other person does, I can't say, plan for that person. You better do something for that birthday. I can't do that. <laughs> but I can help you to control how you react to that how you come out of it, how you handle your emotions, and what you can actually do to have a better birthday. And actually, dare I say, a good birthday. Actually enjoy your birthday. Okay, so the first tip I wanna tell you guys is to give yourself permission to feel. Now, it might seem a little bit weird because it's very weird for me, and I know probably even watching this back, I'll be like, wow, how come I was so sad like that? Why was I sad? But sometimes it doesn't matter why, it just matters that you are. Give yourself permission to feel that feeling. If you need to give yourself a good cry, maybe watch a movie, do something to get those emotions out, maybe journal. I would say with this one though, to give yourself a time limit for that sadness. When I was in my car, I knew, all right, nay, this happens every single year. Like, you're not going to go into your birthday like this. You're not gonna go into your birthday feeling depressed and sad. You're gonna go into it feeling okay. So I'm gonna give you this moment to be sad right now, cry it out, but then we're moving on. We gotta move on. We have to move on. The second tip I have for you guys is to not be afraid to celebrate yourself and even celebrate by yourself. Do not be afraid to do that. Something that I have in my calendar is my birthday. I mean, we all probably have our birthday, but I put in the location, I put everywhere and I put a whole bunch of different emojis. I have that there possible every single year. And it really just makes me feel good because yeah, my birthday is worth being celebrated. Um, don't be afraid to do things for yourself, whether that be waking up in the morning and making a nice hot breakfast for you, going to get a massage, going to an exercise class, whatever makes you feel really good, do that for your birthday, do it. And even if it's by yourself, do it, do it. <laughs> Number three is to recognize that your birthday is a new year and a new start. Something that my sister has like ingrained into my head is although a lot of people use January 1st and they celebrate it as the new year and they make all these resolutions, they do all these things, they say that new change is coming, we neglect that our birthday is literally our personal new year. That we have the chance, maybe you didn't do things last year, maybe last year didn't go as you wanted, but guess what? You have a fresh start now. Number four, and this is something that I know can be a little bit hard because it's something that I deal with too but embrace love from other people. When you're feeling sad on your birthday, it is so easy to isolate yourself, so easy. And I know this because even as I was watching videos myself and like looking into this because I was filming some type of way, I was reading in the comments and a lot of people said that they deactivated their social media account or they would go away from family and friends or like travel away so that no one can contact them or turn off their phone all day so that no one could say happy birthday to them or celebrate them. And that literally is a form, if not exactly self-sabotage. So often the things that we want, we push further and further away. We're begging for love, we're begging for acceptance, but we push away any side of that. As we turn off our phones, we isolate ourselves, and we're thinking in our mind, it's so bad, but we think, if they really loved me, they would find a way to reach out to me. Really? Really? Because they're not able to jump through every single hoop that you set, then that means they don't really care? No, it doesn't mean that. It literally means that we have put a boundary up to not let people in. And that only person we can blame is ourselves. So if you have deactivated your social media account, please activate it again. <laughs> activate it. Let people shower you with love. You deserve it. You deserve it. Four is to talk to somebody about it. <laughs> Be vulnerable and open about how you're feeling to somebody else. You never know who actually feels the same way. I thought that I was alone in this, but I actually talked to my best friend and I realized that I'm not as alone in this as I thought I was. He shared his experiences with me too and I realized I'm just not as alone. And I promise you're not either. If you don't have somebody to talk to, watch videos. That actually helped me as well. Watch videos of people sharing their story and their experiences with it. Read the comments, communicate in the comments. You'll find that people are there with you. Number five is to know it for yourself. Ask yourself, 
if nobody sang your praises on your birthday the way that you wanted, <laughs> would you still be worthy of it? Or do the actions of other people actually declare your worth? Does somebody not doing something show that you're not worthy of it? Or are you worthy despite how anyone chooses to act? If you don't know it already, the answer is the latter. You are absolutely worthy despite what anyone else does. Something we have to realize is that we're human. People don't always meet our expectations, but it doesn't mean that we're any less worthy of great things. We're worthy of it. And that is something that actually really just changed my entire view of this year. I'm like, even if nothing happened, and I know my family, they, they always do something to make me feel special, even in small ways. But even if no one did anything for me, anything, if I stayed home and like I was just by myself all day, I am still worthy of having a really, really good day. That's the same for you. That's all I, I just want to tell you that. If it's your birthday today, you are worthy of having a great day. You're worthy of something special because you are special. <laughs> Don't let anyone convince you otherwise. You are so special. You're so special. And you have another year to make a difference in your life and in the lives of so many people. We are so lucky to have you in this world and we're so blessed that you have another year on this earth. I can't wait to see what you do. <laughs> so I hope that helped you. Um, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe and like this video and share it with somebody who, maybe it's not your birthday today, but maybe it's a friend that needs to hear this. Share it with them and I love to see them here too. I can't wait to see you guys again in the next one. And until then, bye guys.